Crazy to think how much the hockey stick has developed through the years, but for the most part has remained the same. A long shaft with a blade to knock those pucks into the net. Not much to it. But I still think there's an interesting history behind it all. So let's take a look back and see where the development of hockey sticks have gone and what everything even does. The oldest hockey stick we still have around dates back to the mid-1830s in Nova Scotia. The design of the stick resembles a lot of what we know today with a few key differences. For starters, it's made of wood, specifically sugar maple. It's made from one big piece of wood, and the blade has no curve. The stick originates from Nova Scotia and was originally owned by William Dilly Moffat and is believed to have been created by the Mi'kmaq, a group of Native American people who make great hockey sticks. In the mid-19th century, the Star Manufacturing Corporation started selling the Mi'kmaq sticks as Mi'kmaq hockey sticks. The hockey sticks were mostly made from maple or willow trees, which was also a common choice for golf club shafts and wooden tools. Ash gradually became the preferred wood type in the league through the 1920s due to its affordability compared to other materials. By the 1940s, the process included laminating the stick. By squishing a piece of fiberglass between pieces of wood, the sticks became a lot more durable and even more flexible than ever before. In the late 1950s, the New York Rangers center, Andy Bathgate, began breaking his stick blades to add a curve along the middle. He found the bend made his slap shots highly erratic. Soon after, Chicago Blackhawks forward Stan Makita and Bobby Hall also began breaking their stick blades and even asking their stick manufacturers to pre-curve their blades. Through the 1960s, the curved blade took over the league with many players adopting the banana blade. I'm not making this shit up. Some blades would reach curves of up to 7.7 centimeters. The fact that goalies were in so much danger with shots being more powerful and unpredictable, plus the last thing we would want to do is introduce helmets or something. In 1967, the league enacted rules to govern the curves that sticks may have, which are up to 1.9 centimeters in today's game. Okay, bringing it back to the 1980s, hockey stick manufacturers took after cricket and baseball bat manufacturers, who were making developments by using aluminum to make their stick things more powerful. The hockey stick manufacturers were like, that's a good idea, and introduced the aluminum hockey stick. It's the future, and it's time to ditch that old wooden stick and upgrade to aluminum. Yeah, that's not how it turned out at first. Players found the use of metal sticks challenging, as the feel of the stick and the flexibility were way off compared to their wooden counterpart, due to the fact it's straight up metal. Not much wiggle room for this stuff. A design using an aluminum shaft with a removable, replaceable wooden blade was tried. This combination became very popular in the late 1980s to early 1990s, giving the wooden stick a good run for its money. It's a true underdog story. Today, most sticks are made using a composite, which means it's constructed by mixing two different materials. The most commonly used materials would be fiberglass, carbon fiber, Kevlar, iron, and carbon. Mixing these materials, we've developed sticks that rocket pucks towards players' faces at speeds we've never seen before. With the history of sticks out of the way, I feel like seeing how each part of the stick comes together is important. From top to bottom, you have the knob, using friction hockey tape, players wrap the handles to allow for a better grip of the stick. The tape is also used for the blade of the stick for similar purposes. That being, the puck sticks to the stick better. The question is, are you heel to toe or toe to heel? The longest part of the stick is the shaft. I feel like you guys are gonna hear some pretty obvious things for the next couple of seconds, so bear with me. The shaft is where the flex comes in. You gotta have that flex or <laughs> what are you even doing? The more flex, the stiffer the stick will be. Flex is measured in a numerical value going from 40 to 100. The flex is measured by how many pounds it takes to bend the stick one inch. So if it takes 40 pounds to curve the shaft one inch, that's the flex of 40. You want less flex for stronger players as they can compensate for the extra stiffness. Along the bottom is the blade. This part's pretty important. It receives the puck, shoots it, passes it. Unless you're Timo Meyer, you just use your hands for that. What was the NHL last season? Just like the flex, the blade is a huge characteristic to the player using the stick. The three aspects to the stick blade are the curve, face angle, and toe. 
The curve is the basic curve you see in the blade. The face angle is the angle at which the blade sits with the ice. A more open blade means that the face of the blade is turned up and will cause a higher trajectory for the puck than a closed face angle. The toe shape refers to the shape at the end of the blade. Usually it's either round or square. Are you round or square? Square toes make it easier to pull the puck off the boards or do some fancy ass toe drags, where the round toe makes it easier to flip the puck and also offers slight advantages in basic puck handling. Seriously, look at Ryan O'Reilly's stick compared to Ovechkin's. There's a huge difference. It's crazy how much a blade can make an impact on the game. Want to hear a funny story? In a game between Toronto and Ottawa in March of 2009, Jason Spezza, as a senator, noticed people were chatting about his stick. So what's his best course of action here? Be honest? Take the penalty? Or snap your f stick? Definitely C. That's the right choice. What's that? Uh, oh, everyone saw you do that? Oh, and they're measuring the stick? Yeah, get in the box, dude.